What do you think is the next step for Skylar Thompson as a super senior quarterback? Well, I think uh, cerebrally more than anything because he was able to sit and listen to Coach Mess for an entire season and process a game plan and process in-game adjustments. Uh, and his physical tools are back. I mean, I've seen it firsthand. So it's just more he learned uh, about the game planning and about defensive defensive adjustments and things. I'm excited for him. I heard you say this offseason you think he's potentially an NFL guy. Well, yeah. Why do you why do you say that? What do you think? One is is arm talent because uh, he does have elite arm talent. He's he's a good enough athlete, and they don't ask him to, to run like Lamar Jackson anyway. And, and the fact that uh, he, he's played a lot of football, and the more football you've played, the more experiences you have. That's what they're lacking right now at some of the. Uh, NFL school or NFL teams is, is finding those kids that, that have played multiple snaps and multiple games and his experience factor will give him an opportunity he, and he'll have a good year this year. How much do you envision Will Howard playing because you mentioned him in the same yeah. context as Skyler. Uh, we got to get him ready to play if he's like he's the starter we you know we don't know what's going to happen um, but if somebody said that last year we'd have said no 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 we're just going to focus on Skyler and then boom you know everybody has to be ready to play and uh uh, whether it's uh, COVID and to those two guys, it was an injury. And so I, I will grew so much as a football player this spring, watching him lift through the winter and then in the spring and in the summer of just transforming his body. Uh, and has, I knew when we talked every after every game, even when he had some tough times, that this was going to make him better and it has. Coach, you kind of talked a little bit about how Deuce is an underrated running back. Having that offensive line the full year under their belt in the full offseason, does that benefit him, especially as a runner in the trenches? Yeah, I think it really does. Uh, and you could tell that in the spring because he took the lion's share of the reps with the with the first group with all those offensive linemen back. And uh, you could just tell how much more comfortable he was and how much more comfortable those offensive linemen were with him. Uh, but uh, no, I think he is an underrated. People think he's just a great receiver. He's a dynamite tailback. Just put him in the eye formation and give him the football. He made some great runs for four and five yards last year. Uh, that uh, uh, and he's just stronger this year. He's heavier and he's stronger. How, how have you guys handled the idea of the vaccinations? You, you can't mandate it. No. Nope. The school's not going to. Yeah. You know, it's not a small private school. So yeah. How have you guys you know, I think we've done really well. I asked uh, Matt Thomason this the other day, and I think we're uh, just under 80% um, of our team vaccinated, fully vaccinated. So I'm excited about that. I don't know, just like you guys don't know, what are the protocols going to be come August? Uh, are they going to be mandated by the university or by the Big 12 or NCAA? What's going to happen? But uh, uh, I know that uh, we've we've pushed it, and a lot of kids have, have been vaccinated, and now we'll see what happens as we get into the fall. Maybe backing off of that, um, is there any protocols that you implemented due to COVID that you're going to keep this upcoming season? Um, I wouldn't have probably put any true protocols in there, whatever our, our department would have done, but uh, that's what we just got to wait for in August and see. You know, right now we have pretty pretty much normal activities going on veneer, normal activities in our food service, uh, as, as well as in the weight room. So I'm hoping that stays the same. Coach, they're talking about the expansion of the college football playoff. For you, just as a more small school coach, even though it was FCS, for the ability for smaller programs, non-Power 5 programs, to be able to have their opportunity, do you think that's a benefit to the college football program? Well, I think they, it was good that they put it to 12, without question. Uh, give more teams an opportunity to, to compete for a national championship. I was a part of it for uh, for seven, eight years, and we were fortunate enough to win seven national championships doing it. And uh, just the buildup of each of those games, uh, playing 15, 16 games, uh, is difficult. You no know, question that's difficult on, on the student athlete, but play for a championship and, and have the fact that, man, we had to go through a gauntlet of four or five games is pretty cool. Back to Skyler, he's been awesome the last two years against Oklahoma specifically. Is that something you've seen during the week of practice in his preparation, or is it just a big stage he shows out for you guys? Uh, yeah, I just hope it's a big stage. I haven't noticed. He goes about his business every, the same every week, no matter who we're playing. Uh, and he maybe just rises to the occasion. Maybe some of the other things, you know, factor into that with, with Deuce making a play or us creating a turnover or blocking a punt. But, uh, um, you know, I'm looking forward to watching him uh, for a full 12 games. And that's what we didn't have even last year is he didn't know how many games he was even going to play. How much of a luxury is that to have a guy like Skylar Thompson been in the program, was off maybe some last year for some injuries, but now he's been able to get back with his team. What's that like for you as a coach? Well, it's a great security blanket, I think, for the whole team. Yeah, just the fact that he's the leader of the team. He's the guy that there's a lot of great leaders we have, but he's the main one that they all look to. 
uh, but it's it's he's earned that too because of his play, because of how he conducts himself on and off the field, uh, and I'm excited to see what he can do. Coach, coach, the first three weeks of the season last year, you lose to Arkansas State, you beat Oklahoma, and then you lose your starting quarterback the next week. What were those three weeks like for your program? It was a, just the same roller coaster the entire next 10 weeks where you never, never knew who was going to be at practice. You never knew who was going to play in the game. Uh, and we learned an awful lot as a staff. But uh, yeah, each individual event, I mean, shoot, there were so many events last year, it's hard to keep track of. Kind of piggybacking off of that, not having a full offseason last year was kind of un un unbeneficial for the younger players. To be able to have that this year, for, especially for players who started last year coming in right away, does that kind of give you a more of a benefit overall? Yeah, I think there's a lot of kids that uh, played a lot last year that maybe we weren't anticipating playing a bunch, and now they were able to have that experience, get a full full year or cycle in the weight room, as well as uh, spring ball, summer conditioning. Uh, we have more depth. I like where our, where our team and program are at. We've got to continue to get better, but I like the trajectory we're on. If you had the junior college players, you took 10 transfers, I think, this cycle. Do you think it will be more of the same? It's a good question that none of us can answer. Nobody's going nobody's gonna to be able to answer that for sure. We want to be a developmental team first, and we have to be, and we're going to be. But you don't know what's going to happen uh, at a specific position from one year to the next. Uh, and I would hope we don't have to take that many, but who knows? We're going to... Every program is going to have to save a few back. We were fortunate that we were able to save a few back so that we could add some people because we lost some depth in the secondary. We've added a lot of guys in the secondary just because we lost so much depth. There. How do you sustain those retention levels to be that developmental program you want? Relationship, relationship, relationship. And that's the hard thing is just because I build a relationship, it, it, it's still, uh, you know, do they see the, the fact that they're going to play? It still comes down to that. And it's, it's hard for a true freshman to play. And then sometimes uh, there's frustration if they don't. Um, that's where you. It, it great, it's great to have a guy like J-Mac or a guy like Daniel, uh, a guy like Noah that said, you know what, just wait your time, and you, you're doing good things. And, um, you know, that that's the cycle we're in right now. And so it'll be interesting to see. I think it'll the transfer portal will level off a little bit this year, but not all the way. Coach, you had some the way uh, you approach high school, high school players and all this assignment. Bring them in, and they're looking at it just like everybody else, you know, all, all the other players, transfers. Because it really pretty much accepted JUCO, but that, that, the transfer portal has just totally just brought you about the world. It, it has, and it's not going to change, though, because you're immediately eligible to play somewhere, so people are going to go look for another opportunity. I feel bad for the high school kids. My son's a 2022 that we're trying to find a spot for. Uh, there's a lot of kids like that. Uh, but, um, you know, that, that's – this is year one of it. Let's try to see what happens over the next two or three years until we get a, a better body of work on them. Yeah, was everybody expecting it to like explode like it did or just kind of like Everybody was expecting this explosion, yes. Because I was going to ask you, you had some guys who missed the whole spring, like Sebastian and, and TJ. How are they coming along? Uh, TJ's 100% cleared. Oh, wow. And, and he's ready to roll. Uh, uh, he just got cleared, I think, 1st of July. Seabass is probably a little bit behind him. We're hopeful for him in, in uh, early August, but that would be, he'd be about the only one that, that we're still kind of in a holding pattern on. You guys have so many departures from, from running back since the end of last season. Where did it kind of come after Deuce in terms of pecking order? Well, uh, two, two guys come to mind for me. One is Jacardier Wright, and uh, Cardi had a really good 2019, and then a lot of things just transpired in 2020. But he's grown, he's matured. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for Cardi. I think he's going to be a really good player and have a good big impact for us. And then uh, getting Joe Irvin back, I think is critical. Joe's a, a really talented running back, and uh, I, I think he's going to carry the ball an awful lot. He's going to catch the ball an awful lot. He's one of the best blockers we have. So I, I feel comfortable the fact that uh, we have some good depth and some competition there. Coach, what are your expectations for the summer arrivals, the summer transfers, the guys you had to play in? Everybody's here. Yeah, what, what are your expectations for them? I mean, they, to jump in late, is, is it realistic that they're going to be able to contribute right Absolutely. away? Absolutely, they're, they're going to have to. I mean, because of lack of, of numbers and stuff, they're going to have to. But they also are coming from the, the, the four-year kids are coming from sustained cultures that they understand there's playbooks and learning and that stuff. Um, and, and so those kids have already jumped into captain's practices, jumped into uh, meetings and stuff. 
Um, so I, I think there's, you know, that month of August is going to be critical for them. And then the couple of junior college kids probably uh, a little bit further behind. But, uh, um, you know, maybe we don't need those guys quite as quickly. We'll find out. Coach, both Gary and Neil said that they believe that with the new NIL rule that more players could actually stay an extra year now that they can't get paid. Do you believe that, that could be a trend that starts moving forward, especially for all teams? Yeah, it definitely could be if it, uh, you know, if it continues to um, get kids a little bit more money in their pocket and, and uh, um, you know, have some good options with the with the NIL where they can make some money. Absolutely, I can see it happen. Uh, a lot of new names. Talking about like athletes being confused and stuff like that. Is there anything new you're implementing in the locker room in regards to things like TikTok? No, you can't do any of that stuff in our locker room because of you, you can't profit off of any of that stuff in a K-State uniform or on K-State's campus. A lot of new names in that DB room, but how do you feel about the nickel spot right now? Um, we've moved Amaris Brown there, and Amaris is healthy, and I think Amaris will be a really, really good player there. Um, we've got a couple other young kids that I'm excited about uh, that uh, are talented, but just uh, just don't have the experience. But uh, I'm excited about uh, being able to find some guys that can cover the slot receivers, and they're going to get a great challenge every day from Philip. And then last thing, I touch on Stubblefield and Sincere Mason. We haven't really talked about them. Yeah, um, Sincere can uh, be that nickel or a free safety. He's going to help J-Mac and, and uh, where Rush East is at, I see him playing that position, but he's athletic enough that he could play the nickel. Uh, where Reggie would be more of a nickel or a corner. Uh, and, and Reggie, just in limited things, he's got great movement skills and physical kid. I, I'm excited to see what he's going to do once we get to August. How, how cool has it been for you to have Cade on the roster? Yeah, it's been neat. Uh, you know, his pops came and saw him a couple weeks ago and got a chance to catch back up with Kurt and, and uh, uh, excited. He's going to be a good player for us. He's a, a tremendous uh, leader. He He's out there with our quarterbacks all the time trying to learn more and more about our system. He's a smart kid. Um, he blocks. He catches the ball. He'll, he'll be good for us this year. Who did you think, in terms of the early enrollees that spring benefited the most? Who just really stood out when you kind of were able to go back and look? Uh, Timmy Horn is going to be a difference maker, and we knew he was going to be good, but until you talk to Rebus and Adler and Noah, and they go, holy cow, coach, this kid this guy's a big, big man in there. He he was really good, uh, and Julius Brents uh, gives us a dimension and corner that we haven't had. If you're six three, two ten, can run and are physical like that. How how well do you know Kurt Warner? I know you both know Iowa guys. Did you play together? Yeah, we played together. Yeah, I've known Kurt for since I was. Uh, they say I was a senior and he was a freshman, uh, and then he I was a GA for three years. So I was there his whole time. And I've kept in contact with him. Kurt, Kurt's one of the best. He's going to go see his movie? Ha, probably. <laughs> Hopefully he just sends me a copy of it. <laughs> but when you look at the receivers overall, what gives you hope that they can be more productive? Health. That's the biggest thing. we got to get them healthy and we got to keep them healthy. People saw what Malik could do when he is healthy. Uh, and so uh, he's, his health is paramount. Uh, Philip, we got to find way, more ways to get the football to. Seabass, Sebastian Taylor, we got to see where his health is at. That's why we, we brought in Cade as well. We needed another guy there. Jalen Travis is a young player. Landry's coming off an injury. I think he can help us. Seth Porter can help us. There's going to be great competition in there, but uh, we got to get guys like Malik um, to play at the level he played at, at the end of the season. And main most of that is his health. Is there anything other than just health that clicked from Malik late? Because you're right, he did have two really good games there. Uh, I, I don't know what you're looking for there, honestly, because of COVID and stuff. I don't know. Piggybacking off that, how much did this change now that, that Mess is now their full-time kind of position coach? Is that kind of result in some of the games you wanted to see? Too? Absolutely. You know, when when the play callers coach in your position um, and he knows exactly what he wants, um, you know, you want to get some football. You make sure you, you understand what the position coach and that position coach is a play car. It was it was good for J Ray because J Ray brings something to our tight ends and fullbacks uh, that I really like, and I think they're going to be benefit from that, and it helps us from a play calling standpoint with our wide receivers. Is it, with the two JUCO guys you added, was that just a deal? Of just saw them, saw them play late, decided, hey, we really want to get these guys in. Here? Well, with Kingsley, we had missed out on some tackles. Always were second, getting a tackle, and this kid's got four to play three, so he was a young player that we really liked. So we hope that he can sit a little bit and, and then develop for this year. 
and then uh, with the wide receiver with Tyrone, it was the same thing. We saw him, we saw him play, came to a camp, you know what you're able to do, uh, and it's still a position of need for us because of the injury factor and then the fact that we lost a number of guys at wide receiver too. Another guy who's been hurt a decent amount since he's been a case safe when he's been healthy. Seems like Sammy Wheeler was a guy who's really made a difference. See, guys, well, you say healthy, you think that's pretty uh, Absolutely. Good he, he's a terrific tight end that is getting better at the blocking, getting better at route running and seeing defenses and stuff. I pray for Sammy because uh, when he makes some big plays, I mean, he's, he's a mismatch nightmare, and he always seems to make a big play, and then you're just hoping that he doesn't get hurt on it. And I feel bad for him. He's kind of been snake bit a little bit, but uh, we need him to be healthy. Do you still see with both him and Daniel in there? Do you see tight ends still being pretty good? Oh, yeah, bad? yeah, between those two and, and Nick Leonard's coming back and, and Connor Fox has gotten so much better. Absolutely, we'll be using the tight end a bunch.